In this video, we're going to be reviewing a cold weather heat pump that works all the way down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And in addition, we're going to show you the heat pump in action because we're actually going to be installing this at my neighbor's house to put it to the test to see how it keeps up in cold weather. And this video is actually part of a three part series. So if you wanna catch those other videos where we install the system and do a rundown of how it actually performs in cold weather, as well as a third follow up video to see how it performed through some of the coldest nights, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to stay up to date and we'll also make sure to link those videos at the end of this video as they come out and before we talk about the specs of this specific unit if you're tuning into the channel for the specific time and not sure what a heat pump is and how it works there's actually another video on our channel that explains this but a heat pump is basically just an air conditioner with a reversing valve so this is not a new technology by any means but cold weather heat pumps have been gaining popularity recently because of things like the inflation reduction act and heat pump tax credit as well as people just wanting to save a buck due to the recent spikes in natural gas that we saw last year. Now this model here that we're going to be installing is a two-ton unit and it's actually a unique application that we don't install that often because the indoor unit, which is this guy right here, is actually a floor unit. Now this might look similar to a PTAC or a package terminal air unit, but like what you've seen at a hotel, but it's actually just a different variation of a mini split head unit. And if you go to the ACIQ website or check out their product, line on HVAC Direct, you'll see they have several different options ranging from slim ducted units to cassettes, uh, in addition to good old fashioned traditional mini split head units. So if you get one of their head units or slim ducted units or cassette units, it's still going to pair with a condenser just like this and it's not much different, but this is just a unique application. And they have a few different condensers that you can choose from. This one happens to be specific for cold weather applications, which is why we're opting to install this because the mountain home this is going in sits at 8,000 feet elevation and we get very cold nights there. And this is actually going to be replacing a wood burning stove, which is the current primary heat source for the area that this will be serving. Now, this is my neighbor. And since I have lived in the neighborhood, the coldest nights that we have gotten is negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit. So the other two videos I mentioned Mentioned, we'll be covering the installation as well as a walkthrough so you can see how it sounds and we will be measuring the actual decibel readings that we're picking up and comparing that with what's on the spec sheet. And in another video, we'll go over how it performs on a cold night. So if you're seriously considering getting one of these units and want to see it in action, like I said, make sure you stay tuned because we will be giving you a walkthrough of how it actually performs in some of the other videos that will be linked at the end of this video. So that being said, let's dive in and look into some of the specifications on this particular unit. Now, this particular unit has a cooling capacity of 24,000 BTUs or two tons. And in terms of efficiency, it has a SEER 2 rating of 21.5 and an EER 2 rating of 13. Now, these specific ratings will vary from model to model. And this is because each individual unit has a specific SEER measurement. Or if you see a higher SEER rating advertised somewhere on the website, it's just because the SEER will always vary across the different size of the unit. Units. Now, that being said, this is a very efficient system, and as an inverter, that's to be expected. And as far as the heating capacity, it's actually a little bit higher at 29,000 BTUs, and the actual output is going to derate depending on how cold it gets outside, because once they get down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, it will be operating at a reduced capacity. And although I don't see the actual numbers listed on the spec sheet, this unit does qualify for the Inflation Reduction Act and heat pump tax credit. And on that, Renault, just remember that I'm just some dude on YouTube. So ask your accountant to verify that you qualify for that tax credit. But this unit itself does qualify, which means that it has to maintain a minimum of 75% capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when I spoke with the technicians at ACIQ, I found out that this unit maintains close to 100% capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit and its low ambient rating goes down to negative 22 Fahrenheit, which is negative 30 Celsius for all our Canadian friends watching. Now the unit itself feels pretty sturdy, so build quality isn't really a concern. And as I mentioned earlier in other videos, a lot of the brands will have some overlap between parts. So a lot of the components, just at a glance, they look very familiar and you could put this next to 10 other manufacturers and I hate to say it, but a lot of them are going to look almost identical. But really the true test will come when we run it in extremely cold conditions and I get a report from my neighbor on how it performs. So stay tuned for that video because we'll be dropping it sometime over the next month when it gets extremely cold and we can put it to the test. Now my comment on the parts looking similar was in reference to the fact uh, that this actually has a pretty impressive warranty with 12 years on the compressor 
compressor, and seven years on the parts. This is right up there with the big names you've heard of, like Mitsubishi and Daikin, which if you have watched our channel, you know that we are a Daikin dealer. And I have put out several videos before talking about brand, and the truth about brands is that at the end of the day, it really just comes down to warranty. But the bottom line is that at 12 years on the compressor and seven years on the parts, they are actually very competitive, and that's a very decent warranty. Now, as far as their other product lines, if you go to their website, ACIQ actually has other HVAC systems and even traditional ducted systems as well. And some of their inverter forced air HVAC systems look very similar to the Bosch product line in terms of system design. So if you're looking for a more traditional HVAC system with an air handler and a condenser, they do have those options available as well. And before we go any further, if you're enjoying this content so far, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. And also, if you have questions about the system, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is this something you're considering putting in your home? I'm always curious to hear what projects people are working on. And we do read and respond to the comments and also use those comments to make content that's pertinent to you. So thanks again for posting a comment and we do our best to respond to all the comments again to make sure we're making content that's relevant to you. And my general thought is that if you are looking for a system to DIY, then this is probably something you can do with this. I would just make sure you or someone you know is comfortable installing them. They definitely have very affordable prices and are competitive with some of the other brands that are out there. One thing to note is these don't come with pre-charged line sets, so you will still have to pull a vacuum when you install it, which honestly, pre-charged line sets are garbage in my opinion. Mr. Cool owns the patent on the pre-charged line sets, but if you ask any HVAC technician or contractor about the downside of a pre-charged line set is that you can't shorten the line set when it's pre-charged. And the reason that this is annoying is because you can't shorten the line set to the exact length you need. So ACIQ product will involve a traditional flaring method in order to install the system that is much better than doing a Mr. Cool unit in my opinion because you can make the lines at the exact length you want which will make for a nice clean professional looking installation. So if you're considering buying one of these units, I would just plan on having all the tools you need, like a vacuum pump or a buddy that knows what they're doing. And it's probably something you could knock out in a weekend. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these units, there's actually a link in the description with a discount code that you can use to get a discount at checkout. So make sure you check that out and the link is in the description. Now. As promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now. One is about the install as well as the live performance demonstration to see how, how it actually held up. And if those videos aren't showing up right now, just check back in a few days because we are getting them edited down right now as we get the equipment installed. So we'll have those out for you shortly. Thanks again for checking out the channel and we'll catch you on the next episode.